Hello, YouTube, the world, everyone. How's it going? Uh, excuse the new environment and my, my food over here and all the little noises and everything. And I uh, had a little bit of a leg injury, so I've been out. So I haven't recorded anything recently. And since I've been down for so long, Snyder Cut is the perfect thing to watch and talk about and everything. You have to excuse why I'm a little pissy. I've just, I've spent so long recording over an hour talking about just this stuff in the review and not even a long form of the review and nothing it's just I'm a little frustrated because it's just like going through all this work for something that's mediocre so let's talk about it let me let me talk about Justice League Snyder Cut version I'm going to be looking back and forth between my phone I have tons and tons and tons of notes on here so first things first uh, my thoughts on Justice League initially. Day I saw it, um, I did not pay to see it. Um, I was surprised it was not the dumpster fire that I thought it was. It was I thought of just mediocre superhero movie, a below average movie, and then I rewatched it and I was not not impressed. I could not make it all the way through an IMAX. I think it was a 3D version of it too. I just couldn't do it. Uh, I don't enjoy the, I did not enjoy the movie. I did not enjoy the direction it was going. I enjoy uh, some of the other DC movies too. I've s tried to see some and uh, they're just, they're all over the place. They don't have any consistency. They're all supposed to be the same world. They don't feel like the same world. It's just, they're all, they're all discombobulated. So out of everything, I think Man of Steel and Batman v Superman are at least consistent to each other the very least because they're directed by the same person they're created by the same same person's in charge of all of it and justice league here snyder cut i don't really you know here's the thing i have problems with the entire series starting from man of steel i think that there's just a, i there's certain issues that i've had for the entire time does the snyder cut in, in short term, I'm going to give you guys, does the Snyder Cut relieve any of those issues? It relieves some from Justice League, from a movie that was released three, four years ago. Is it 2017? So, you know, and then they went through extra reshoots and all that. So this movie, everyone is like, is like, com is like comparing this movie to the fact of like, this is what we would have gotten. And it's like, no, it isn't. It isn't because there's new footage. There's things that are cut around and look different. And it's just, it's not the same movie. Maybe it's the movie he wanted to make, the Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition thing. Maybe that's what it is, but it still has extra footage. It still has fan criticism. The scene that was shot, shot with Jesse Eisenberg is different. It's a different scene. So before I go into everything, I want to go over some things. The thing I really want to go over are the good points of the movie. Um... As spoiler-free as I can, but this this review is going to be a shorter one, and I'm going to have a really nitpicky one that's going to go through everything of the movie that nobody talks about, because everybody's just giving such general things of, oh, this scene was so cool, and this scene looked so much better than the original, and this music sounded so much better than the original, and so much better than this. I don't care about any of that stuff. It doesn't matter. right? And there's, there's things that people are also talking about and mentioning that I'm like, why the fuck are you talking about that? You know, I don't, I don't think there's any, any scene that I, any review that I've seen so far that has not mentioned Zack's daughter in some way. And this is coming from, it's a tragedy. I'm so, you know, it's, you're sorry to hear anyone who has to go through that type of stuff, who gets to that point and anything that's there. But we're talking about reviewing a superhero movie. There is no... Like what? What do we? What are we fucking talking about? This guy's personal life and tragedies having to do anything with the movie has nothing to do. Whatever, whatever I'm gonna bitch and complain about has been here since Man of Steel, since Batman v Superman. I'm not gonna mention his daughter because it's not my place to mention his daughter. It's not my. It's not my place, and it's not my business. That's his. I wish him the best of luck with all of the grief and all of the wave of roller coasters of emotions that goes through it absolutely and everybody who wants to like in their reviews talk about his daughter shut the fuck up 
Shut, don't mention her. The movie was made in her honor because of the thing that happened. Don't mention her in your review. Her, she has nothing to do with this. And it was like, I forget who it was who said it. I wrote down notes, but I didn't write this. One like, his daughter would be so proud and happy of him. For, like, making a movie? Like, come on. Like, you don't need to put that as part of your, of your review. It's, it's just like this, what, what really bugs me, and this whole thing of like mentioning his daughter, why I'm mentioning this now, I want to talk about the YouTube echo chambers that are just blowing just smoke up S Snyder's ass. So here's just some of the like review quotes. I've only written down the stuff from three people, Jeremy Johns, Tyrone Magnus, and, and Angry Joe. The only ones that I wrote down, everyone else says like basically the same things and they go through the same, but these guys had just some key points, some key little phrases that just like either boggle my mind or make me go what the fuck are you talking about or going like yeah that you're exactly right but then why are you recommending the movie so uh jeremy johns uh i feel like this is dc's time to shine i could agree with that i had a great time with this movie i know okay time with this movie it was fun popcorn flick to be honest it was worth watching and buying it was worth seeing the difference between this and the 2017 version uh, and then in that same review, yeah, it could have been a three and a half hour movie instead of a four hour movie. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking could have. That's criticism. That's not a compliment. So put it as criticism. <laughs> and I'm not calling all these people. I'm just having, having here. Like these people have big channels. Don't get fucking at me because I'm calling people out for saying stupid, just stupid shit. I don't want to say brown nosers, but fucking brown nosing bullshit. Tyrone Magnus, where where's the, where's the the one that was that's here? Here we go. One of the absolute best movies, period, I have ever seen. I know that's his over exaggeration and everything, but whatever. It defecates on the version that came out in theaters in every single way. No, it doesn't. There are some things that it did that this movie does not do. Sorry, very few things. <laughs> very very. Very few things does the uh, Josh Whedon's cut of uh, Justice League actually do over there. Very few things, but they are there. You can nitpick this movie if you want, especially if you're a Snyder hater, which I'm not. But but the man's a damn genius, and he compares him to Spielberg, Nolan, Cameron. He goes on to like the Russo brothers and somebody else, and I was just like, yeah, whatever. The, whatever with them, sure, whatever. Compare him to the Russo brothers. I don't give a shit. To, to, to Nolan and Cameron? Nolan and Cameron. Nolan and Cameron would have... Ne Nolan made a superhero series. The Dark Knight Rises is better than <laughs> Man of Steel or Batman v Superman. If you want to say it's on par with Justice League, sure. Neither one of the, his other two Batman movies are anywhere near any of these other ones. And that's his superhero variants. 1984, ni uh, uh, 1918, 1984, uh, Tenet, even, Inception. These movies are much better movies than what, the, whatever, whatever. And, and, it, and I'm going to get the Magnusites and everyone at me, whatever, and the Angry Joe people at me, whatever. Um, and then he, I love the way he said this quote I, I, if the rest of the world sees this movie the way I did, then, like, he'll get free reign to do what he did. And it's like, you know, to call out these echo chambers, uh, which I know Tyrone just not, never, would never talk to me, would never actually ask my opinions or have a conversation with me. He's just going to see this, or people are just going to go send it to him, and it's just going to be like, oh, here's some fucking hater, nobody on YouTube, whatever, of course, because that's how everybody who's small time on YouTube gets treated anyway. Like, you're not a person until you're over a million views or whatever. Subs. And it's like, no, no shit, nobody's going to see this movie the way that you're seeing it because you got an exclusive interview with somebody who you like as a director blowing smoke up their ass and they gave you a one-time interview that they would have never given you the time of the day to have that actual interview before, before the movie came out because COVID's still around. It's a home release on HBO Max and you have, what, like 2 million plus subscribers? That are, more, they're very, very likely to watch the movie. So he wants you to promote the movie, especially with an interview. 
Like, of course, we're not going to see it through that <laughs> that that way. It's because you're getting special treat. How can of of course, if Snyder came on here and and actually had a conversation with me, I could have a real conversation with him, and I would recommend the movie a lot more because I can actually have a conversation and ask the questions I want and blow the smoke up his ass that I want and criticize him the way that I want. Of course, I would do that. Same way I would do with the Russo brothers interviewed me for uh, watching their Avengers movies. I, it's the same fucking shit. Like, but nobody's going to see it like you, dude. One of the best, uh, I, this, I, I love this line. I love this line from him. One of the absolute best movies, period. And Angry Joe. Angry Joe is like, uh, other Joe and Alex gave it a 7 out of 10. I think Alex leans kind of to a 6. If I were to talk with him, maybe a five, if I were to point out all the bad things there. Angry Joe is like an eight or a nine. Then he gave it an eight. And then the spoilers, he's like, ah, I'm kind of waiting to go to give it to a nine. He's like, some points of the movie were a 10 out of 10. Um, okay. And then like, I think Zach's visuals are good enough that I would be interested talking about a sequel. Just the visuals though, that's big enough for... A four-hour movie of just visuals? I love it way more because Darkseid is in this. Like, these are just some of, like, the weirdest quotes that people are just having goldfish memory and forgetting that Batman v Superman was a thing. Man of Steel started off everything on a mediocre track. When I went to go see Man of Steel, I went to go see it with my best friend, another one of my friends. And my other friend made it all the way to the theater, like, uncomfortable and quiet the whole time. And then he was like, you know, guys, honestly, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't, don't want to see this movie. I'm out. And by the time we got out of the movie, we, before we were bitching, I'm like, dude, come on. You're here with us. Come on. Just hang with us. You know, come watch the movie. And then by the time we got out, we were like, yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> he, he, he didn't miss as much as we thought he was going to miss. It's just like. Like, these echo chambers are so weird. And I, I agree completely. Why I, why I bring these up is because I completely agree, agree completely with this one quote from Alex from the Angry Joe Show. I always agree with him because he's, he's cynical and sarcastic. And he looks at things of like a, yeah, but was that necessary? Yeah, but if, you know, if I want a fanboy, I can say this. But I'm not going to, so I'm going to say something else. For something that long, I expected a little more. And that's exactly what I felt from this movie. So for the short review, how would I sum up this movie? Without any spoilers, without going into things that are there, without saying anything that could give away the movie, this movie is the film equivalent to Cyberpunk 2077. Anybody who doesn't know what that game, what Cyber 2077 is, it's a it's a game that came out by a, a, a big studio, CD Projekt Red, last year, and it had just a bunch of controversy and tons of hype around it. And I'm gonna just explain Cyberpunk 2077, and let's see if you hear can anything that could be related to Justice League. It was a majorly hyped piece of media from this group who is known to do things that has a cult following of some sorts. And whether or not that cult following are the only people who watch it, there are also actual people that appreciate the, the art style, the direction that these people go. Then when it came for the initial, initial release of this uh, piece of media, because of behind-the-scenes drama and bullshit that happened there for whatever reasons, uh, by accident or on purpose, uh, it got released in an incomplete, incoherent, and unfinished state. And it was a jumbled mess. So, by the time it will be completely finished and up to par to what they're promising, which Cyberpunk isn't there yet, but Justice League, we just got its final, final cut release. By the time it's done, is this really deserve the credit that it should have gotten on a day one release? Because this isn't a day one release. This is not the result of what would have happened after Batman v Superman. Because this came after critic reviews, fans outrage, nitpicking, putting in plot holes, having a movie that was already like a test bug to see what didn't did and didn't work. And in the end, this is what got released. And I know everybody's going to say, but this is what Snyder wanted, but this was his vision. 
if this was his vision, there would have been no reshoots. There would have been no reshoot. There would have been nothing, nothing in this movie that needed to get added on after what he had already done. Nothing. Because they were already in post-production by the time that he'd had to step out of the project. It's not. And criticisms that people give about Justice League have been slightly changed for this. So this it doesn't it doesn't matter if this is the original vision he wanted. It's not what was going to come out. And it's not what came out. What came out was a Frankenstein mess because of all this other tr the between everything else that happened. I'm not going to mention tragedies. I'm not going to mention executives and studios. I'm not going to mention ego with other directors. Everything in the just things in the background made it so that this was kind of a doomed to fail type of thing here. And in the end, what did we get? We got a movie that I don't think is the best DC movie. It could be. I think Wonder Woman's better in most parts. I think Man of Steel is actually more cohesive, maybe. Um, neither of them are as exciting as this movie, the action scenes and, you know. But this this movie is equivalent to Cyberpunk 2077. It is something that you cannot just judge and give a rating based off of like your feelings for the director this movie did not come out this was not a movie that would have ever been successful in theaters it's not a movie that works for theaters and the problems of why it doesn't work for theaters is exactly what we were all talking about when batman v superman came out why are we making a Batman v Superman movie that is introducing Wonder Woman when none of the other two main characters, one of them who's on the fucking title of the movie, doesn't have a solo film for this version? It doesn't matter that people know Batman. We don't know your Batman, so we don't give a shit. That's why people don't give a shit about the Robert Pattinson one right now. Why? Because we don't know him. Once the movie comes out and you actually get to know him, you'll get to see, you know what, actually I like that Batman. Hey, you know what, I don't like that Batman. Everyone is saying this is like a great movie. It's a perfect movie. Really? Batman still uses guns. Batman doesn't use guns. What? Where is it? Where's the, where's the, this is just more like a, this is more of the DC stuff I'm used to. No, it's not. Batman doesn't use guns. What are you talking about? People react to things. So, so that's the shorthand. And if, if for, for everybody who's going to be like, who's not hearing the actual, like, really what I have problems with, I'll read you the five bullet points that really sum up what sucks. The amount of slow-mo is way overused. I like Snyder films. I like 300. I like Watchmen. I don't like it more than the comic. I enjoy Watchmen, though. I can enjoy it. I can sit down. I can actually sit down with my girlfriend or introduce somebody into superhero movies with Watchmen. I have no problem with that. I think the boys at this point does a better job than that. But I can watch that with them. I can watch 300, and yeah, some of it's cheesy. It's also very old. Uh, I can't, I just don't like Sucker Punch as a movie. That's my personal feelings. I enjoyed Man of Steel. I didn't love it. I didn't think it was fantastic. It was good. It was a good superhero movie. I mean, it's, it's a good Superman movie. Not superhero movie. <laughs> I think I said that. It's a good Superman movie. For all the ones that we have right now, Batman v Superman is a colossal fucking mess. And the slow-mo here. It's just like, it's a four-hour movie. There was already stuff that could have been cut out. And then there's unnecessary slow-mo with like Lois Lane scenes. It, just the just slow-mo that's not there. It's like, it's like the first Justice League. Would I have a problem with the opening scene? The music and the tone don't fit each other. That person kicking over that crate of fruit, whatever. And it's all slow-mo. It's not, it's not necessary there. Don't know why it's there. Not necessary. All the slow-mo that happens with the Flash is necessary. And it looks great. And it fits in. I don't need slow-mo for, like, Diana for, like, a fight scene where, like, she's, like, sword swinging and then... And then... And, like, it, it doesn't need to constantly cut in. It's, it's dumb. It's cheesy. 
In certain parts, it's just it's a little bit. Somebody needed to be there and be like, hey, you know what? I know you love the slow-mo, but this does not need it. This, this scene really does not need it. It would actually look better to just have a cohesive action scene right here for a couple of seconds. Um, no one reacts to anything appropriately. Everyone has this blank stare. Usually, there, there are very few people that like, like everyone reacts at a certain point to something, but very few people consistently are like actual reacting to things. Cyborg, uh, with as little as he has to, like he's mostly CGI, but he has the most like reactions in life out of everyone, other than Barry, who just reacts at everything to the point where it can get annoying. Uh, who else? And then the robber. The robber against Wonder Woman is the he, he's the the only person that appropriately reacts at any given point. Uh, the scenes and the characters in them feel like they're actors on a set and they're not in an actual world. Metropolis at twelve in the morning, at five in the morning, at twelve in the afternoon has nobody in there, nobody walking around, nobody ever, nobody's ever around. Lois gets coffee, goes to the guy. There are very few people on the streets. It's not busy. Guy gets shot right outside of a museum in broad daylight. Nobody sees anything until he's already past the uh, the metal detector of the museum or wherever they're at. Star Labs is the only place that's evacuated and around there. There's like, it, it, it just like, it, everything feels like a set. They all feel like sets. And they feel like they're actors walking into sets. Very few scenes seem like very natural there like a natural like world and if i'm not even gonna compare this to the avengers movies go look at harry potter or lord of the rings when they walk into somewhere like when they walk into the tavern in fellowship of the ring it's a real tavern when they walk into the city it's a real city when they're in harry potter and uh i think it's a deathly hallows part one and they walk into that cafe and you know london's going around they almost get hit by the by the the, tr uh, the bus going by, and then they go to the cafe, and then it's like the eerie quietness alerts you that something's not going on right. Something's wrong here. It's because these feel like real worlds, so you notice when things are going on. But in this thing, it's like it's like the criticism of everything that everyone had the problem of, like Man of Steel, like oh all the casualties, and you know, and 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 then now he's a savior and everything. What about all the casualties? All the casualties that they tried like doing, like oh that island is isolated and Batman v Superman. It's like they just doubled down. It was like okay, let's not just have let's have nobody on there except for the actors. So it feels like a play. It does not feel like a natural lived-in world, which that's fine. It's a fun action movie. It doesn't need to do that, but then he's not a genius director. This is not a perfect or near-perfect movie if it doesn't make me feel like it's a living world. It doesn't. Power scaling. Holy shit. The power scaling is so inconsistent throughout, throughout everything. Everyone, everyone's weird, weird power levels at all times. Except Superman. Superman's more powerful than anyone and everyone. And then it, it just, it's so, it's so... I'm going to get into that in my long review because I just have notes and notes on notes of like this person's power is inconsistent and this person's power is inconsistent and this person's power is inconsistent. And it's not just good guys, the bad guys. Steppenwolf is all over the fucking place with how fucking strong or not strong he is all over the place. Sorry, I keep moving it. I don't want to keep showing my orange juice, but. uh, God and Batman. Batman. I want to go back to the Tyrone Magnus's quote. There is nothing that the other movie did better. In the original movie, when in original Justice League cut, when Batman got slammed against the car, the police car, and Lois showed up as the as the big guns, he then like groans, ur, ur. and I know it's supposed to be like a comedic scene, but then afterwards, Diana patches him up. It's like the only real scene that they have like together that shows like any sort of like bond or or, or like something something more than just like superhero to superhero, like an actual like connection the two of them have. He's getting patched up. He's feeling being human on a team of nobody else is fucking mortal. He's just a guy dressed up as a bat doing what he can. In this movie, he gets heat ray vision by Superman on his, on his armbands, slammed into the car, still makes a fucking dent, then gets heat ray vision again by Superman, and then gets up with no problems, 
No nothing. No painkillers like they were in Batman v Superman. No nothing. He's fine. Some scenes, he's going arm in arm like 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 he's fighting a normal human with parademons. In other ones, parademons are like swinging and smacking him across the fucking room. There's just no consistency there. It's just like whatever to make a cool action scene, which I have no problems with. But that's all it is then. It's cool action scenes. There's no co- – there's no – I would like to say consistency, but there is to like a fault. It's just it's, – it's just such – it's so weird. It's very, it's very weird. The power of scaling is all over the place. And that wouldn't be a problem if they actually didn't try to make, like, it a big deal. If they didn't try to make it a big deal that Superman is basically almost as fast as the Flash. And he is stronger than everyone. And Aquaman and Wonder Woman are about the same. And Cyborg is kind of here and there. It's like if they didn't try to actually make these power tiers, like Steppenwolf's the most powerful being I've ever seen. If they didn't try to say that shit, then I wouldn't have a problem. Then it's just in, in, inconsistencies there. It's like, okay, it's whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but if you're going to try to put it there, then I'm going to call you out for putting it there and not putting it in correctly. And then there's retcons and a bunch of plot holes that are just constantly said by so many people. And I am so fucking sick and tired of this bullshit of making something cool for a trailer that makes absolutely no sense in the movie. And there is a few scenes in this movie that really don't make any sense when you really, when you think about it. If you don't think about it, it'll make sense. It, it'll, of course it'll make sense. If you try to think about it, it makes absolutely zero sense. Zero. And anybody's going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you, from Batman v Superman, do you guys remember this line when Wonder Woman shows up to the Doomsday fight? Goes, Batman go or Superman goes, is she with you? It's like, I thought she was with you. When we just spent the whole movie of Batman trying to recruit and understand and Wonder Woman and everything, or, or, or trying to like, whatever he was trying to do with her in that movie. Like, he was aware of her. He, he knew of her. Why put that line there? It's because it's good trailer bait. This movie, the same thing with so many scenes. The biggest problem I have is with Cyborg. With that whole, I didn't think you were real. I didn't think, I didn't think you were real. I'm real when it's necessary. I'm real when I need to be. Like, Cyborg knows that the mother box was found in 1942 by Nazis. Because he's, he's one with elect everything that's zeros and ones. He knows about Diana. He hacked into the bat computer where Diana was at to contact her. With Alfred right there at the bat computer at a place that if he just reversed the IP address, just reverse looked it up, he'd see, oh, this is owned by Wayne Enterprises. He, d he then doesn't put together that Batman is real and that it's Bruce Wayne. Why? Of course he would, unless he's fucking stupid. But apparently for this scene, he needed to be fucking stupid because they needed a cool scene for the trailer. And it happens, it happens all the time with like little things of like, oh, you know what? That scene didn't need to happen because it doesn't make sense. Mm, that scene didn't need to happen because it doesn't make sense because it's unnecessary. And like I said, I have no, I have no problems for everyone knows. I have no problems with the art direction. I have no problems with the visual style overall. I have no problems with most of the acting, most of the dialogue. Uh, it, I mean, a good amount of a good amount of the dialogue, because <laughs> there's the stupid shit. Um, I I like the direction that the movie ended up going. I like the flow the movie had. I think the movie was a fun action movie, and it doesn't ex excuse that there are still all of these problems. And these problems have been here. They've They've been here from Batman v Superman. Some of them were created in Man of Steel of just making this like weird world. And sometimes it works. Sometimes this like comparing them to God's thing really works. Sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like it works. It feels like it'd be, it would have been better not making like a Jesus connection or he's a God, like these, this like, this like, 
praying to them thing like the fishing village scene of like singing the song to aquaman it's like some of the stuff like just doesn't seem to it doesn't really need to be necessary there it doesn't need to be okay it can be that's fine if you like it all i fine i enjoyed a lot of the, uh, of the movie i had fun watching a lot of it it doesn't mean that it's like and this isn't nitpicks because the nitpicks are going to be the long version where I talk about everything. This is not the nitpicks. This is like just telling you, hey, this is really what – this is what this universe is. This is what the Snyderverse is. It is filled with inconsistencies. It's, it looks like a play of just characters on a set, and which wasn't there in Man vs. Uh, Man vs. Steel. <laughs> Man of Steel, except the, the product placement in Man of Steel just – killed me every time i see that i hop and that sears in any scenes I, I i just get like i i i turn even more red than i am now with just anger so what's my final verdict boy oh boy boy oh fucking boy what's my final verdict of the snyderverse film justice league i think this is great a great direction for them to do I don't think at this point in the foreseeable future there is anything and I mean absolutely anything that DC is going to be able to do to catch up to Marvel in the next few years. If they wanted a movie to kind of slow the gap between them, they shouldn't have started with Man of Steel like that. They shouldn't have gone straight to Batman v Superman and killed a good three storylines worth of worth of stories. <laughs> They shouldn't have just done that immediately and just blew their load. Right? They, they should not have let Whedon or another person who has no experience working with Snyder on a movie take Helm of Justice League. They shouldn't have let all the directors do their own things with every other movie like Patty doing her own thing and uh, is it James Wan doing his own thing. They should have had a person at the helm overlooking everything. And at this point, it should have been Snyder. Because if everything was just looking and feeling like this, then we just have a darker superhero thing. We, and, and that's fine. That's fine. Marvel's Disneyed up. Does, it doesn't need to be Marvel. But when it just doesn't have, like... Uh, it, it doesn't need to be Marvel. And it could have its own thing. And I, I like the direction that they go for some of these things. And I think a lot of the characters that I haven't liked in this whole series are much better in this movie. The little parts that we do get of a few characters, specifically Jesse Eisenberg and Jared Leto. I did not like either of their characters in Batman v Superman or in um, Suicide Squad. I didn't like them. I didn't like their acting, their performances. I didn't like their characters and the direction they went. Very few things that I like about them. Very few. And I like them in this movie. Both of them. I thought their characters... And the way that they portrayed them were spot on and much better. Jared Leto actually is one of the only few people that actually reacts to things. <laughs> and he's very entertaining for, for whatever, whatever portion of it he's in here. Same with Lex, uh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Cool. Uh, Joe Mantega, Mantega, whatever, for Deathstroke. I, I think he, the, the frosted tips look much better. <laughs> Uh, you know, th this movie is fun. Action movie. It's not a masterpiece. It's not a masterpiece on any, any fucking level. And I think going forward, HBO Max should just take the IP. Take it for an HBO Max limited release before going to DVD and movie. And even if it has like limited theatrical releases. In like a short, you know, a week here in certain theaters, however long they want to have them. But you got to show the whole movie. Or they have like an intermission. Because this movie has also like title screens, which I don't like. Uh, but those title scenes could could are perfect for if there's seven or eight title scenes. Okay, then after number four, have a 20-minute intermission. Let people get up, get the fuck out, get their shit, go to the bathroom, have a 30-minute intermission. It's fine. I think, though... This series sticking to HBO Max is the right thing for it. I think this direction is the direction they should be going. And this is coming from someone who, does, who again, does, I'm not, 
I'm not a Snyder hater. I'm not a Snyder lover. I like good movies. If somebody makes a movie and I really like it, I'll I'll give them praise. I'll praise M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan on, on, on movies and things that he's done that I like. I really, really, really like uh, the one with James McAvoy before, uh, before they did Glass. Whatever, whatever the name of it was, is I really like that. I think that I'll, I'll, everything that really that's a that's a decent movie. Don't even talk to me about the Last Airbender. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about that movie, All right? And same thing here. You know, I, I don't really like Batman v Superman. It's a complete mess. And the Ultimate Edition just shows that they really didn't know what they wanted to do. They wanted to build an entire franchise on the second fucking movie, which was a mistake. Man of Steel just shows, you know what? Maybe this isn't the right foot you should have gotten off on. Maybe this isn't the character you should have gone off on, seeing the direction that Batman v Superman went. Justice League, at least it's this, at least it looks consistent. At least it's visually the same throughout. At least the tone is the same throughout. At least it's entertaining. And it is. It's a good, fun action movie. And if that's what you want to see, go watch it. But if this movie were uh, in theaters, I would not have paid to see this. This would have been a red box for me. I wouldn't have seen Wonder Woman 84. It took me three days to finally get through that nightmare. Maybe it was, maybe it was two days, and then the third day I had to rewatch some things to be like, I, 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 need to, I need to get some clarity. So overall, if you've got HBO Max or you know someone with it, go watch it. You'll probably enjoy it if you like Snyder or you like action movies or you like superhero movies. You'll probably enjoy this movie at some point. But that's it. You know, it's not, it's not like the second coming of Jesus, for fuck's sake. It's a super Hollywood action movie. And that's cool. That's fine. It's, it's Avengers, the first Avengers really isn't that much different from this movie, I think. I, th I think this movie will probably age better than Avengers, the first one. But it really isn't that much different in that sense, except for... A couple of things where that actually feels like they live somewhere. You know, it doesn't feel just like sets. It feels like a lot of sets, but it also feels like a lived world at some point. So, go watch it if you have the time. If you like Snyder, you like action movies, like superhero movies, you like DC, go watch them. I think you'll enjoy yourself. I, I had fun watching it. And even though I got frustrated with all the stupid bullshit that's here, I enjoyed it. I did. And nobody, nobody come at me for the people I called out. You know, they're doing fine. They've all got hundreds of thousands or a million plus subscribers. They're doing fine. They can take the criticism for when they say stupid, uh, brown-nosing bullshit, okay? And I would love to actually talk to any of those people if they would love to. Of course, nobody's going to talk to me. I'm 18 subscribers or whatever. But, uh, like, this is the reality. Mm. He's not a genius director. This isn't a genius movie. It's good. It's a good action movie. So go check it out if you got time. And if you want to hear everything, I have like 45 bullet points. Like 15 of them are good points too. 15 are, are good. Actually, uh, let me let me read you uh, a few of the uh, of the good points just to get you guys like just to kind of tickle your balls to to have you come back. Where's the good parts? The good parts. Visuals are consistent. Action scenes are a lot more interesting and fun to watch. The uh, uh, team dynamics are much better. I think between everyone, between Alfred and Bruce and, and all the team members, and I think everyone does. Uh, a lot of the scenes, like against the Amazonians, against the Atlantis, uh, the Atlanteans with Steppenwolf, all much better. Powers are explained a lot better. Even if they aren't consistent, they are explained better. Um, there's a couple of lines that are really cool. There's a, a few re reveal scenes for certain characters or scenes that are pretty good. There's lots of like little touches here and there that make the movie a lot better. Much better appropriate mu music choices. 
So there, there are things that I really enjoyed. Really had fun. You know, is this is this to me the best DC movie? Doesn't really does it really matter? It's a DC movie. None of them are better than the best Avengers movies. They're not better than the best Marvel movies. They're not better than the Lord of the Rings movies or Harry Potter at its mediocre. They don't I don't think this even excels as a movie on that point. Is this is this movie better than something like Prisoner of Azkaban? Or Deathly Hallows Part 1? I don't, I don't think so. But that's me. It's a personal opinion. It's a choice. Um, and I hope to God that HBO Max actually goes forward with this because this is like an actual like selling point for HBO Max too. I wouldn't I wouldn't get HBO Max to watch another Wonder Woman movie or Aquaman 2 or even the Flashpoint sequel or Flashpoint movie, his, his standalone or whatever. I wouldn't do any of that. I would do it for the Batman movie if there is one. I would do it for whatever his next one that he would do with Darkseid as the mashup. I would, I would do that one. I'd watch that on HBO Max. So I think this is a real opportunity for HBO Max to swoop up something that's not really in their, uh, in their norm. And for, for uh, a personal message to Snyder, uh, congratulations. If this, is, if this is pretty close to what your final vision wanted to be, congratulations, man, on finally being able to, at the point of, of everything that's, that's gone on and happened in and outside of the movie, for you to be able to come back and, and make your vision. I'm happy, I'm happy that you got to do that. And I'm happy that this movie exists. I am much happier that this movie exists than it does not exist. And, uh, and yeah, and sign, and sign back Henry and, and, and Ray and say, fuck Warner brothers, because this is the, this is the future for it. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Bitch and complain about me all you want. I, I can fucking take it. That's fine. I don't give a shit right now. Uh, let me know what you think of the movie. And if you want to hear more, I mean, this is already long. It's probably going to be like 30, 35 minutes. So I'm going to probably have to put timestamps and shit. But I will, I'm going to be going through like the entire movie. Um, so you might want to even watch it alongside, you know, having, having me here or skip to the scenes or whatever. I'm going to go through it all. Uh, every, every little part that was just inconsistent and just bugged me as a, as a, as a, as a movie watcher, as a, as a, uh, as a bullshit home critic. And I'm going to talk about all the things that were really good and cool. Uh, so yeah, join, join in that next one. If you want to, if you want to hear the rest and until next time, guys and gals and girls and everyone out in and outside of whatever that spectrum of rainbow is to everyone. Have a nice one. Don't, chew each other's fucking heads off over a movie it's a movie all right don't get stuck in echo chambers have your own opinions and just have a nice day guys <laughs>